Stephen Kerr from the Irish Inquiry. Just to take a min minute of your time. I'm in a rush, actually. Don't worry, we'll, we'll walk with you. We'll walk with you. Um, Luke. What are you filming me for? <laughs> now we're filming from the Irish Inquiry. We've tried to send you an email a couple of times. You've never responded. Luke did respond to us today, and we've looked into some of his answers. You'll find various links in the description box below. Given that SARS-CoV has already mutated, doesn't that lessen the, uh, the chances of an effective vaccine? No, actually, probably not. Um, and if it does mutate, the RNA vaccines can be modified quickly. Can be, can can be modified quickly? The sequence, yeah, of the RNA, and then it protects against another next strains. Professor O'Neill admits here that when the virus mutates, which it inevitably will, a new RNA vaccine will be required. Why would they go with these RNA vaccines or these DNA vaccines uh, rather than the, the more I'm traditional? I don't know why you're filming me. Well, Luke, we're, we're going to be, our viewers want to hear what you have to I say. I don't want to be filmed especially, though, you know, because I'm a bit tired. Uh, Luke, un unfortunately now, you're a public figure. I you're am, but I don't want to be filmed without my permission, though. Is that not a problem? You're the, well, no, we're doorstepping you here. You haven't I don't mean doorstep. You, have, you haven't replied to any of our emails uh, for an interview. You're doing, getting a lot what of... Are you again? The Irish Inquiry. Right. Uh, so, you know, you're getting a lot of coverage with RT, you're getting a lot of coverage with News Talk, um, and there's a lot of people concerned that uh, this vaccine debate hasn't been had in public and hasn't been debated. Right. So with that in mind, the RNA and the, and the DNA vaccine, yeah. why, are you, why, why do you think there's such a, a push on these rather than the traditional sort of vaccine? Well, there's loads of vaccines in development, as you probably know. Yes, I do, but... All but the different technologies are being uh, explored. Am I, am I right in saying that you're... you're, you're, you're um, your opponent maybe more so for the RNA or DNA vaccine? No, not at all. No, okay, no, good no. stuff. Um, well, there's so, live attenuated ones, as well, remember, and there's inactivated ones too, so... Um, okay. Anyone that works would be great. So Luke confirmed here that any vaccine that works would be great and that there are loads of different types of vaccines in development. In Ireland, we are currently in line for five different COVID-19 vaccines through the EU Advanced Purchase Scheme. How, how can you be so sure of the safety of the RNA vaccine seeing that there has been no long-term clinical studies carried out? Yeah, that'll be watched in the phase four once the vaccine's rolled out. In other words, once hundreds of thousands of people are vaccinated, you'll watch for that phase four safety analysis, you know. The average time to develop a vaccine pre-COVID-19 was 10.7 years. Luke stated clearly that phase four of the vaccine trials will happen on the first hundreds of thousands of people taking the new vaccine. Will people be informed that they are effectively signing up to be trial participants by taking any of these vaccines? Also important is that regular vaccines are only monitored for long-term safety up to three months. This is noteworthy as some adverse responses can occur months later or develop over years. Official figures show that actual COVID-19 only deaths in Ireland are in the hundreds. But in terms of long-term clinical trials, yes, you know, we don't well, know over months and years what effect these vaccines are going to have on the people. We don't know that, that's true, but pre don't. previous vaccines, um, t one to two month safety data can predict long-term safety, you know, in previous vaccine trials, so that's a good thing. Today in Ireland, cases are still before the courts for the swine flu scare of 2010, where hundreds of Irish people's lives were ruined with rushed vaccines. We leave a reference in the comments to an Irish Examiner piece showing this. Swine flu was massively overstated as a threat also. Okay, so you're, you're confident that, that, that these clinical trials for one or two months will be able to predict long-term? That's the hope. That's yeah. the hope? Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, do you think that the vaccine manufacturers should be held liable for any adverse health effects that may arise? Don't know. You don't know? No. So if people are injured uh, in the future, and bear in mind that you said a one or two month trial there is, is okay uh, to I predict... I didn't say that. I said... Um, what, what did you say? So the big question is, how long can you wait for the safety signal? Right, so the FDA and the EMA have mandated a certain amount of time, and then they judge the safety based on that time, and that's their view. And they're the regulators, so we follow what they say. Everything I say is simply, I guess, repeating what the EMA and the FDA say. So just to answer again, you don't know if vaccine manufacturers should be held liable I'm not an expert any... on the indemnity or that, those legal aspects. I can't okay, comment. so you've, you've no comment on that? I can't comment on okay, it. I'm not, I'm not, I haven't got the expertise to comment on okay. it. Currently, governments around the world have given legal cover to pharmaceutical companies, just as Michael Noonan made the Irish government liable for swine flu vaccine injuries. Luke's justification for dodging the question is based on the fact that he's not an expert. This implies none of us are allowed to have a voice on this matter because we are not credentialed experts. And, and finally, just three very quick ones. Some of our, our, our viewers are worried about your potential conflict of interest. And on that note, how many uh, vaccine manufacturing companies do you have shares in? None. Okay. You've, you've no shares. And what about GlaxoSmithKline? No shares in GSK. No. No. Have you ever had shares in any of these no, uh, vaccine companies? Never. But Glaxo do have shares in his company. They provided the 30 million in seed capital for Citrix, along with the vaccine private equity firm, SV Investors. 
Check out the reference in the description. Now, I'm an academic, you... and I've done work with those companies, which is in the public domain, to help them in their anti-inflammatory programs, not, not vaccine programs. Okay, uh, so you're not a, on the board or director in any uh, pharmaceutical companies? No, by no means. Okay. Uh, well, I am a founder of uh, a company called Citrix. Okay. Which is in the anti-inflammatory business, for example. They would have investors like GSK invest in them, which is an indirect connection to a pharmaceutical company. But uh, I have no direct involvement with any big pharma, like being on the border. Luke says that he has no direct involvement with big pharma. But in addition to the Glaxo investment link, Luke's company also signed an agreement with Eli Lilly for $880 million back in March 2020. Glaxo and Eli Lilly are as big pharma as big pharma gets. So do you stand to, to gain financially if the Irish government roll out a vaccine programme in Ireland? No. No? No, not at all. Okay. This is technically true, but if Citrex drugs slash Eli Lilly immunometabolic anti-inflammatory therapeutic vaccines are used by states around the world, then Citrex will surely benefit financially because Luke is a founding member of the company. And finally, Luke, would you be willing to come on and have a, have a discussion or have a debate with some of your peers on this issue? Because a lot of the Irish public are very concerned that the debate has not been had and Irish mainstream media are not facilitating that the debate. The problem is I'm very busy but in my lab at the moment, you see, and I can spend a certain amount of time on trying to inform the Irish public. Yes, but there's no debate taking place and you're in news talk twice a week, you're an RT, you're an off the ball. That, that, that's the extent. I'm, I'm barely able to do those things. Yeah, but there's no debate. Because I'm so busy. Why, why, you know? why, would, you, why would you not take the opportunity to debate one of your peers who, who is saying some very contradictory things to, um, to what you're saying? I've told you, I'm just extremely busy with my day job, which is trying to the find the treatments the for this disease. The, so, the people want to see be, this I'm, debate. I'm, I'm more than happy to see a debate. You know. would you, are you happy to take part I'm, in the debate? I may be, I may do, but I'm too busy at the moment it, with my work.